Hello comic fans, here's El Grey. Welcome to my fourth video about this shelf here with graphic novels and other stuff. This will be my penultimate video about this shelf here because I really want to tackle two boards today. This one and that one. Uh, did a lot of videos about uh, stuff that is on this shelf here, for example, the books uh, by my, uh, Michel Rabagliati or my no bra books and other stuff so if you're interested check out my other videos or videos by other youtubers to get more knowledge about these books so this will be rather quick a bit more quick than the others before we, in which i went really into details about some of the books but it's an overview what can i do uh tale of sand um i already uh, uh, recognize this will be much longer than I think but anyhow Jim Henson's Tale of Sand um, totally surreal stuff uh, with art by Raymond K, K. Perez um, the most surreal story about skipping um, smoking for sure if this is the real uh, core of the story uh, I'm not even sure about that but it's Quite intriguing, I have to say, and a beautiful edition by Arkea Books. Uh, very surreal, abs uh, absolutely in some other ways, is this book by um, John Henkewitz. Uh, Asthma, published by the now defunct publisher and distribution service Sparkplug. Sparkplug. Um, Sparkplug. Uh, yeah, Sparkplug. And a leftover of my Richard Sala collection, which is just there because it's a bit bigger in size than the others, so I had to put it in on that shelf. Phantoms in the Egg, uh, in the Attic, a selection of artwork, and that is. And if you know Richard Sala, you know that you're in for a treat with all these beautiful um, artworks. Then we continue sort of in the vein of, yeah, cheesecakey-ish uh, females. I mean, Richard Klass, uh, Salar is way more classy, but Ryan Heska in a way as well. But yeah, he embraces pulp like almost no other. And. A neat collection here of the Mean Girls Club. There is a comic book issue uh, done in risograph style, but that one I have somewhere else. So if you not want to go uh, for this beautiful hardcover here by No Bra Press, then check out, uh, if you can get it, I, I figure this would be a bit hard to get in the meantime, but there was um, a comic book version of it. This one here is an interesting one by Jeremy Baum. This is more a collection of artwork and short stories here. Um, oh, it's much more story than I remembered. Than I remember. But maybe the very first thing to check out if you like this kind of surreal art with some strangely looking yet interesting chicks in it it's, uh, is this one by Fantagraphics, um, Dörfler. And it's in English uh, despite of the umlaut ö, Dörfler. But, uh, for the most part, you will get the story as far as you can get these kind of serial stories without uh, reading the text, I guess. So, <laughs> Koshlea and Ostachia by one Hans Pickheit. I think he's a Dutch guy, but I'm not sure. Probably, very probably totally wrong about that. 
But yeah, as I said, it surreal stories with chicks in it. Um, got this for half price or so. And Dane Dussie's Meat Cake by Fanta Graphics, of course. So this shelf is full of Fanta Graphics and even more full of No Brow. Uh, this is actually my No Brow shelf here. With a little drawn and quarterly in it. Um, yeah, basically this shelf is a mess. But this is Brian Chippendale's Puke Force. Colorful, uh, messy cover. And yeah, the kind of stuff that you expect from Brian Chippendale. This is really, I, I don't lie, this is really, uh, don't, don't want to lie, this is really a chore to read, but somehow strangely rewarding. It's, it's fun, but you can't, absolutely can't read it in, in one sitting or so. This will take a while. Totally the opposite, uh, pretty sort of lighthearted, uh, colorful, of course, entertainment here, Skip by Molly Mendoza. One of these beautiful books by uh, Nobro. I, I would wish you could feel all the stuff here. The paper is excellent. The colors, they embrace you. I mean, I mean this is a um, post-apocalyptic story, but it's even more a story about friendship. And I don't know if I would uh, dig the story uh, for, on its own, but with this exceptionally fantastic art, um, and that is pre presented in this luscious way here. There's no way not to enjoy it. In Waves by Al Dungo, after Living the Line uh, praised this, Carlson Gruber, I guess, uh, did it. Um, I had to get this book here. It is a pretty used, somehow beaten up copy, but no problem with it. Uh, the art is not here the uh, factor that pulls you in, but it's a very touching um, memoir blending the story of a personal loss of the um, character or uh, it's autobiographical. So it's actually um, the story of his girlfriend who died and was sick to death and, and blends this with a history of surfing. I'm, not a surfer guy, as you may uh, could guess, but this is a fantastic read and very emotional, totally fun. Uh, one of the best books, I guess, from Nobra, at least story-wise, for sure. Um, two books that I have now almost forever, Forming 1 and 2, by Jesse Muinan, and I still wait for Forming 3, because this story actually should be uh, continued. It's a kind of alternative um, um, genesis um, with aliens in it and very cosmic, very um, childish in a very positive sense, uh, very goofy and colorful. And beautiful. So, and here in this box here, I store all these magazines here. The No Brow magazines. Um, six up to ten. Uh, the very first five books are um, almost impossible to get. Um, but uh, and they have have done uh, a new one uh, recently. So maybe this was uh, the last book by of these No Brown magazines, even though I really would hope they would do more of these with amazing art. Uh, on the one half, with this one here, it's uh, art throughout. Um, but with the ones before, it was 
half of the book was uh, filled with comics, uh, a double page for each artist, and then you flip it around and the other uh, half of the book is filled with art reproductions, comic-related art, if you will. Beautiful stuff, absolutely highly recommended. So, and then, oh yeah, we have two books by John McNaught, Kingdom and Dogwood, because of uh, other formats, I have um, smaller books by John McNaught somewhere else. Um, you can always recognize the style. He uh, uses little panels like uh, Chris Ware does, but has a very unique um, style in, in skipping the outlines for the most part and um, coloring uh, his comics in this way and um, really using silent panels and silent parts to great effect. Fantastic cartoonist, uh, pretty unusual um, and unique stuff, for sure. Same with Robert Hunter. You, just, you can see, we are going through the Nobrow books here. Uh, Map of Days by Robert Hunter. One of the very first books that I bought because of some video by Comic Crack, if I remember correctly. Um, same with Graphic Cosmogony. Graphic Cosmogony. And this book here has a beautiful paper and uh, tells uh, creation uh, myths. Uh, so this is filled full of uh, comics about creation by different takes by different artists. And if I remember uh, correctly, seven stories. Uh, 24 artists take on seven pages to tell their tales of the creation of everything. So, there you go. Um, the Spectators, The Spectators by Victor Husimo. How to Survive the North by Luke Healy. He brought some expedition to the polar regions. The master builder of New York City, Robert Moses. Um, written by Pierre Christine, a European comic writer who wrote uh, Valerian et Veronique, um, uh, Loreline, Valerian et Loreline. Uh, for instance, and lots of other great stuff. Um, but here he takes on a real uh, yeah, biography of um, Robert Moses, um, city planner and, and architect who had a big impact on New York City. So if you're interested in, in the history of New York City, I think this would be a no-brainer for you. So, and here we have a cardboard box with different stuff in it. Neurocomic, if you're into biology and want to learn something about neuros, uh, neurophysiology, physiology, neurophysiology then uh, how brains and nerves and all that stuff works. Uh, go for this book. Fun and a bit different way to learn your stuff. Um, Oliver Schroven, um, Sunday and Parallel Lives. He has a very unique um, risograph style. He uses the risograph colors in a very own way. And the stories are great. Um, then Locomotion and High Times by Nobrow. This is actually not a comic but a Leporello and even maybe even more for kids or something. But I'm a big kid, so 
Why not? Backside is obviously um, has art two. So this tells you the story of locomotion. Same time, same thing here with high times. Then we have these little one shots: um, the hunter, golem chick, and cyber realm. And here, Fata Morgana. This is Koyama Press. Very colorful comic. Can't be praised enough. Um, as I guess I, I showed this off at least in my video about colorful comics by John Vermeer and uh, some German production Colorama Clubhouse 9 or no, Clubhouse 13. Um, yeah, a collection of risograph comics which was the product of some kind of um, jam session or um, how do you call it, um, meeting uh, of some artists over the span of a week while they experimented with risograph. Yeah. And Crawl Space, another one by Koyama and the fantastic Jesse Jacobs, uh, Safara, Safari Honeymoon uh, by Koyama Press as well. And by this shawl, you know him. I mean, I've shown all the stuff here, but in my Jesse Jacobs video. Then I have a huge stack of stuff published by the Italian publisher and uh, distribution service, um, Holo Press. Dandy Lumanzi in Fetto. Uh, the theme throughout Holopress's books, in case you haven't seen them, is that they all use black, more or less. This is one of uh, Titsunori Tavaraya's uh, fantastic comics on plastic-like plaque uh, paper. So the lines actually shimmer and the stories are somehow a bit demented, but... Oh, very fun and enjoyable stories about sci-fi stuff. Somehow the, totally the right stories for this, this kind of art. Tetsunori Tavaraya really a scrapbook, or a scrapbook of everything else. The least uh, favorite of my Tetsunori Tavaraya stuff. Um, something more by other artists here. And uh, this is actually the usual size of these plastic-like paper books, dimensional flats, uh, crystal bone drive, all by Tetsunori Tavaraya, all um, more or less available through Holopress. They, they did um, uh, more um, editions out of this, second, third, and whatever printing, so check out their site. Uh, they will come up probably uh, again and again. And here we have some anthologies with different artists and there's even some Tetsunori Tabaraya in these UDWFG Underdark Weird Fantasy Grounds anthologies. Here's some kind of folder with different stuff by Henry Dumas. And a hardcover, the Li They Live in Me by Jesse Jacobs. And another one, Baby in the Boneyard by uh, Jesse Jacobs. So he published his stuff through uh, Holopress and through Koyama Press as well. So. Good. Now let's go to the second board here. And here are all the Paul comics by Michel Rabagliati. Paul is actually an alter ego for uh, Mr. Rabagliati. So here he tells just stories out of his life that for were formative or important for his life. Uh, all these books are published by um, Drawn and Quarterly or Conundrum Press. Um, 
So check out their websites. Somehow Michel Rabagliati seems to be a star in Canada. Um, not so much in the rest of the world, I think. But highly recommended uh, if you like this classy, old school, cartoony style. And the stories are always very emotional. And um, yeah, didn't pick up the last of his books uh, yet because uh, that one deals with his divorce. And so I was not so much into the mood of um, yeah, watching all the people, pieces here of his life, maybe probably falling apart. Um, yeah, but for now, I, I think I will go uh, and check out that book as well. Now to Joe, Matt and Seth and Chester Brown. That trio of friends is, uh, stays side aside side here on my shelf as well. Um, Louis Riel. Add the Happy Clown, the most demented comic ever, that, um, yeah, by Chester Brown. And I love this book here. It, it was one of these comics that really from the, that pretty early uh, showed me that comics could be very, very crazy, very, very insane. Um, this is the book called Fuck. In uh, English, it has a much... Uh, more uh, silent title. I never title. Uh, I never liked you. This is the German version of it. Never. I never liked you. Peep show by that old perv Joe Matt. The poor bastard by Joe Matt as well. Wimbledon Green, a little nice hardcover um, by Seth, of course. Light fans, and it's a good life if you don't weaken. Then we have, yeah, yeah. let's take garbage, um, some kind of art book, trying to, yeah, uh, yeah. or it's an art catalog about. Um, comic-like exhibition about garbage. Um, much more interesting, in my opinion, Bicycle Day uh, by Brian Blomworth. Showed this in a video. Uh, about Albert Hoffman, the inventor uh, of LSD. Kyle Baker, Why I Hate Saturn. On book by Alison McCreesh, Ramshackle, a Jello knife story, one autobiographical piece of her uh, living in, yeah, in, in some suburb under um, precarious um, conditions. You know that one here by Fabio Moon and Gabriel Bar, Day Tripper. Don't have the absolute edition. Uh, somehow, I think. For me, this format here is, is okay, but the story is, is really fantastic. Then I have Two Times Minimum Wage, book one by Bob Fingerman. Bitchy Bitch by Gregory, Roberta Gregory's. I just picked this up because it was cheap and it didn't really blew me away, uh, to be honest with you. This is somehow considered to be a great piece of art, flood, about big flood. Um, at the time when I read it the first time, I wasn't so much in love with it, but I get, I uh, guess I appreciate it now a lot more. Then I have a bit of Mouse for you, um, the German version of Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Uh, two trade paperbacks and a little a slipcase and yeah um, it, I guess it's fair to say that Art's, uh, Mouse was Art Spiegelman's more or less only comic I mean he did much more stuff but uh, everything else pales in, in uh, comparison to Mouse so yeah he 
and the publisher and everybody celebrates this book for all the right reasons. I mean, Mouse is a must read, of course. This is a um, catalog with uh, essays and, and everything that you wanted uh, to know about the creation of that book. And now let's do this stuff here. Azaf Hanuka, I'm really a sucker for autobiographical comics and especially when they're done in this very cool style here and everything is uh, these are uh, this is a collection of one pages that were firstly published in some kind of magazine and here we have the winner by Carl Stevens this is one of the secret gems that uh, really make up these two shelves here I just realized that because uh, this here as much other stuff on these shelves is really a fantastic comic uh, blending um, his personal life with his job as an uh, uh, watchman for in, in an art museum and his relationship with that woman there um, and with this beautifully uh, rendered um, photorealistic style then a free comic book day issue of Jim Ruck's Street, uh, Street Angel. Jim Ruck's probably best book yet, Aphrodisiac. This is fantastically made by Ad House Books. Showed this one in my video about Ad House. Um, wonderful black exploitation book here. Um, Young Francis by Hartley Lynn, and this one is by Ad House Books as well. Then a, a book in a German translation, uh, The Voyeurs, Die Voyeure by Gabriel Bell. Uh, she does autobiographical. Uh, uh, comics as well, usually short pieces, um, pretty wordy but entertaining. You can't read this book here uh, in one sitting because it's so wordy and uh, throws in all these random pieces of uh, her life together that are not always interesting. Uh, I mean, it's life, it's not always interesting. But when you read one page or so, it's really enjoyable, uh, I feel. A mess of everything by Miss Lasko Gross. Some little books here. <laughs> and then we're back now. Winners by Anna Erlemark by Floating World Comics. I really want to come back to all these comics back and, and show you them in more detail. But for now, this has to be enough. Uh, One Spoonia does very colorful, uh, poppy, fantasy, weird fantasy um, uh, comics. <laughs> and uh, published them via uh, Holopress, uh, Gnomi Side and The Wizard Head. Of all three of them, this one is the thickest and the um, the one that I would recommend to uh, pick up first. So, but then you can almost almost end up my hollow press uh, by Gabriel with Gabriel Dumas, Delma. Oh. However, the title here is if you can read this. Um, he has this painterly style, and this is almost rather a series of paintings than a real story, even though you can figure out some sequence to this for sure. But it's very short. Uh, like this one here. And But in contradiction to large mouths, which uh, plays on a theme, uh, by Francesco di Goya, um, Saturn devouring his children. Um, this is a huge silent comic 
very abstract storytelling. Um, I guess in my video about the Holopress books I told you that this book here can be actually be read from start to finish and you can read it like a manga from, from the back page to the front page. It sort of makes sense as well. At least that's something I figured out. So, um, yeah, very, very neat stuff. If you like this open kind of story uh, telling. Big questions number four. I, this has to be one of the uh, books that once Terence, aka Comic Crack, sent to me. Um, it's an episode of uh, Big Questions, uh, and I will keep it for sure, even though I have now the um, translated edition over there of the whole complete saga, which is just uh, fantastic. Special Exits by Joyce Farmer, um, a memoir about the passing or the last years of her parents and how uh, she dealt with it. Um, Twitter by Harvey Picar. Read it from the cover here. Fun book here by Conundrum Press. Uh, happy stories about well-adjusted people. I mean, he uh, wants to say, obviously, the totally opposite, not well-adjusted, totally not adjusted people. Boys Club by Matt Fury. Yeah, I got it uh, somehow. One of these dudes here was or is misused as a meme by the right wingers, but I think it's not Matt Fury's fault. Uh, it's totally demented toilet humor, so stay away if you're not into this kind of primitivistic, poor uh, humor like I, I, uh, I, I'm into that kind of stuff. Anatomy narrative sampler man first discovered a uh, sampler man, which is uh, the yeah the handle for that creator uh, through Kush books. And here I have um, I don't know if I got this through Kush or by other means, but yeah, you guess get this. This is some kind of medicine uh, catalog of. The human body, but uh, thrown into the collage uh, uh, in, in a wild, weird collage process and uh, distorted. Yeah, one of my uh, favorites, actually, not necessarily this book here by Sam Alden, uh, but. Yeah, Haunter, for instance, by Sam Holden. He has a fantastic, direct cartoon style. Uh, the other books by him, I have them somewhere else because they're much smaller. Um, Why Would You Do th That? by Andrea Zurumi. I mean, not every book here on my shelf is an instant masterwork. Sometimes they're just little pleasures for your enjoyment. As above, so below. I guess this was actually... Yeah, I had to have uh, one book by this artist here. Um, whose name escapes me right now? Will Sweeney, of course. Um, it's pretty hard to get uh, anything by him over here. So, uh, and this is just the this uh, tiny flimsy collection of uh, some artwork by him. But at least now I have some Will Sweeney uh, as well here. And folks, that's what that was it for today. And only two boards to go in one one video and then we have spoken about this bermuda triangle of different stuff um and thanks for your patience and thanks for listening and watching goodbye
Minimum wage by Bob Fingerman, soft trade, soft trade, soft trade paperback. Um, minimum minimum wage by Bob Fingerman and book one. Somehow I have this double. Don't know what's the deal with this year. Then then I have two times uh, minimum wage by Bob 